Welcome back to the show. Demac Properties is a global multi-billion dollar real estate development company and they are single-handedly responsible for creating part of Dubai's sensational skyline and their impressive residence cover the length and breadth of this city. Today we are honored to be joined by Ali Hussain Sajwani, Managing Director and Operations of Technology at Demac Properties to give us an inside scoop of what is going on right now. and a look at the inside values of the company. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're honored to have you this morning. We really are. So I want to read out a comment that was written for you on one of your posts. So with your family, you are not only building great cities, you are transforming the world. And as an Arab, I am proud of you. So it's just an amazing, amazing, the community is so proud of you, the Arab community all together. So how do you feel about that on all your achievements with uh, Demac? I mean, it feels amazing. It's all thanks to, of course, our customers. We wouldn't be here without them. Uh, so it's always great to hear. You know, it gives us a sense of pride. It motivates us to do even better at our job, trying to expand globally. Uh, so not just Dubai, Middle East, USA, Europe, Maldives, wow. Seychelles. Wow. So kind of all over the place right now. You know what's so cool is that I've been here for 10 years and I'll see the name Demac on buildings. So I just know Demac as this massive uh, international global brand, but it started as a family company, which is incredible. Can you give us a rundown of the history? So Demac Group started 40 years ago. Uh, we were a small catering company based out of Abu Dhabi to start. Um, things progressed. My father went into developing and selling small hotels. Then he went into the stock market. I remember 1999, I was quite young back then, and uh, he'd be away for three weeks at a time. He'd be in San Francisco, we had an office there. And then, of course, the big tech bust happened. Uh, 2002 is when the freehold law in Dubai changed. And what happened was he set up the properties, the Demac properties. Uh, my father is a big risk taker, very aggressive. He expanded in a large way. And then the financial crisis happened in 2008, which he saw before other people. He really saw that around six to nine months before everyone else did. And he started taking action early. And that's what helped us a lot. And then I remember what really set us on the map was in 2010, when we had just come out of the financial crisis, he went and purchased this massive land, which Damak Hill sits on today, which was 50 million square feet in the middle of the desert. And everyone was telling him, like, are you crazy? What are you doing? The the world's in a mess, the financial crisis, etc. And you're buying a land for 50 million square feet in the middle of the desert. And today, that's our signature flagship property. And uh, we've just kept expanding since then, growing, focusing on the customer, focusing on the product, on the quality. And alhamdulillah, with God's grace, we've, we've been quite successful. You truly have. <laughs> Your father is very visionary and so vocal on social media about so, so many things. So what do you feel like you take away from your dad or what have you picked up and learned over the years just watching him in his position? Oh, I've learned everything from him. I mean, I remember we, I started in the office when I was 11 years old. Oh, wow. And back then the weekends yeah. were Thursday and Friday. And every Thursday, friends go out, enjoy themselves. 8 a.m. my dad wakes me up and at 10 o'clock I'm in the office with him. So, and you know what I learned that when I was really young is probably the best learning I had. Uh, hard work, attention to detail, most important thing. So even when I started in Damak, I was on the construction sites with the laborers, with the workers. So really learning from the ground up. Mm. When I was in the sales team, I was uh, attending calls and cold calling. So when you go to that level of detail, it solidifies what you can do. And it gives you a very strong work ethic, which is, I think, what's most important, what I've picked up from him. You mentioned your flagship real estate, but what communities are you most proud of now? Damak Hills. <laughs> Definitely Damak Hills. Why is that? It's the first master community we launched. Uh, today, it's probably one of the most premium communities in Dubai. We have everything. We have a uh, golf course, a large park. We have an, a beach, so if you want to go to the beach, you don't need to go to Dubai Beach 30 minutes away. You have one inside the community. Wave pools, petting farms, we have a fishing lake for the kids. You catch your fish and you throw it back in, but still you can go fishing. Uh, horse riding school. 
Yeah, so we have everything in there. Basically, we design our community so you never have to leave. This That's is why, because of communities like this, people go like, Habibi, come to Dubai. <laughs> 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 they see all of this, like the picture of horses and go like, oh my God, beaches within the community. That's incredible. And do you speak to the community before projects to understand the needs of the what people want? Uh, it's a mix. We speak to some of our customers and we speak to the agents. Um, I'll give you an example. In 2021, right when we came out of COVID, we saw a trend where people were leaving apartments and they wanted to move to houses. And the main reason was the big backyard. Uh, you know, after being constricted in your house and quarantine, etc., people were getting frustrated. So we thought, let's come up with a new product. Let's build villas in the sky. So we created Cavalli Tower, high ceilings, huge terraces, infinity pools on every terrace. I remember we launched the project in, towards the mid-2021. And it was our first major launch after COVID. We sold out in 48 hours. And we set the benchmark. A lot of projects have come to market since then, copying that design of large pools mm. and large terraces. Genius. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, OK, so <clears throat> of course, we need to talk about rent prices that are you know, skyrocketing. Uh, so with rent prices going so high, are you still seeing people buying properties? And like, what are you guys doing to just you know, maybe help or combat the rental increases? People are definitely still buying. The market this year is hotter than it's ever been. Last year was a record year. Mm. This year has already broken last year's record for the, same, for the first six months of the year. Rent prices will continue to go up. It's inevitable, but Everything's relative in life. So if you compare the prices in Dubai to London, to Hong Kong, to New York, we're up to 80% cheaper than some of those global cities. So you're still getting great value for money in Dubai. Uh, you have better security than most of the cities I mentioned. Lifestyle, entertainment, less taxes. Mm. So it's a no brainer. So for someone renting right now, would you advise them to buy a property like from, you know, like the very beginning? I would, I, I would definitely advise you to buy a property over renting in Dubai because you get the capital appreciation. Hmm. In the next 20, 40 years, where do you see the property market going? Much, much higher than where it currently is for sure. I mean, if you look at what Dubai has done in the last 30 years and compared to the top cities in the world, there's no comparison. Now, if Dubai could do this in its first 30 years, what's it going to do now that it's known as a global city and it's attracting all this foreign wealth? You have top corporations moving here. You have the biggest hedge funds from the US moving here. Companies from Hong Kong moving here. It's sort of like there's a global brain drain of talent and everyone wants to move to Dubai. So what happens when you get the best talent in the world coming to one place? It keeps progressing. Well, speaking of where the property market is going, uh, one story that's been big in the last couple of months is fashion, luxury, real estate. And you guys are kind of leading that with the Cavalli, as you mentioned, Fendi, Versace. How do these come about and why do you think there's such demand for these types of properties? So, you know, we started this trend in 2007. Mm. Damak Heights by Fendi Casa was the, one of the first branded residences back then. Uh, so it's something we're used to. We're actually quite innovative. We brought this product to market. I think it's all about brand affinity. If you, you could go buy a t-shirt today for 80 dirhams, but slap a Louis Vuitton tag on it and it's 800 dirhams. And it's the same thing. So people like being affiliated to brands. It gives them a sense of belonging, sense of place. Mm -hmm. And I think property is no different. So when you brand something with Cavalli or any of the other major brands, uh, people tend to prefer that to a non-branded product. Of course, also another benefit is when you deal with these brands, <clears throat> they bring in certain standards to the project, which you must respect. So they'll specify the best quality of marble, best quality of joinery finishes. So you know you're going to actually get a premium product versus buying an unbranded product. What other um, trends do you have you guys picked up on like fashion and style status is one like a very prominent one but any other trends? Definitely beachfront living. Mm. So if you look at any market globally, especially in real estate, it's all about location. The, loca the supply for lands 
near the water, near the beach, is extremely finite today in Dubai. Uh, the government announced a couple of weeks ago an expansion to the beaches with Palm Jabal Ali and the Jabal Ali coastline. But again, that was only, I think, 100 kilometers, so, which, which can run out quite quickly. Mm. So my advice is always go for beachfront living, look at prime products as close to the beach as possible, especially today with the type of people moving to Dubai and the luxury market booming so much, that's the product that these type of people prefer to buy. And that's why we've seen such a large boom in the luxury segment. Well, speaking of beachfront living, we've seen the photos of Amali, which we really want to get your insights on. And the, it's, these phenomenal uh, photos are just going to go uh, stratospheric on Instagram because they look phenomenal. This is Amali, you're running it with your sister. Correct. Can you tell us about it? So me and my sister, we wanted to create our own little, uh, little brand. But we had to really differentiate it from what we do in the family. So we decided we want to create a unique product focused only on beachfront living. Uh, super luxurious and the idea is um, we develop resorts globally so our first one's coming up in the Maldives we have somewhere coming in seashells and it's about bringing that sense of resort living to Dubai so that when you finish work and you're on your way home every day at 7 p.m. and you get home it's like you're in a mini vacation every evening <laughs> that's, that's what dream. we want that's it's literally the it's dream it's like you chat GPT what do people want to live in <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the one So it's, um, it's going to be beachfront living, secluded island, five minutes from Dubai. Uh, you literally pull up in your boat, you park your boat in front of your house, uh, fully serviced. <laughs> the norm, come on. <laughs> it is becoming the norm in Dubai now. Where is, where is the location? We're going to be doing it in the World Islands. So it's a few islands which we're redesigning. And it's going to be basically, you're going to have like your own little private island. We're designing it in a way where every villa is going to be its own little secluded island. And of course, you have the clubhouse and all the facilities, the spas, FNB, gym. Mm. So it's like you're, in a, you're living in a mini resort and you go home to that every day. Thoughts yeah. on like Airbnb being the situation? <laughs> there's, there's only going to be 20 of them, so I don't think it's, you're going to be very successful with Airbnb. We will be successful with Airbnb? I don't think you're going to be very oh, successful. Oh, no, unfortunately. Mind. It's like every time you, we have a business idea, there's always something that's just like, no. Dream big, we could own one. Own one. If, I was going to say, if our employer. Speaking of being employed, um, you have been a DMAC employee since you're 11 years old. What is the culture like as a DMAC employee? We had a large culture shift over the past few years. Um, Working in Damak previously, I'll be honest, wasn't the most pleasant experience. We took a decision in 2019 that it has to change. And we've come a long way do in doing that. We've become much more collaborative. Uh, we focused on teamwork, where previously we used to work as silos. Um, we focus on taking care of the employees, giving them all the benefits of living in Damak. For example, uh, discounts on our products, our hotel, our FNB, you get access to all of that instantly. Uh, we introduced some work from home policies in COVID. Not for everyone, but for certain departments. So I think work culture is very important, primarily because you spend most of your day in the office. So if you're not happy for 10 hours of the day, your productivity will go down, you won't be a happy person. And I think life is all about being happy. That's the primary objective you should have. And if you're not getting that out of your job and out of your family and out of your environment, I mean, what's the point? Are you happy? Are extremely. you truly happy? I am. I'm an extremely happy person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, is it, uh, what are the benefits of being a DMAC employee? Does everyone walk out being as happy as you? I hope so. Mm. Uh, it's part of my job to try and make sure that that does happen. Benefits, you get access to all of our products at a discount. You get access to all of our hotels at a discount. Uh, our F&B offerings. our spas. You know, we're not just um, a developer, we have hotels as well. We have resorts coming up globally. So our employees, of course, would get special benefits at those resorts. Mandarin coming up in the Maldives in 2025. We have... Yeah, yeah. So, so we do try to do the best for our employees. Um, our time is running out, so very shortly before you leave us, I want to get your thoughts on how has uh, the industry shifted towards digitalization in the last 10 years and how have you been involved in that? There's been a huge shift. I mean, the very basic is you have to have applications for your customers. 
Today with us, we have multiple apps. Damak Living for customers. We have an agent's application for all the agents who sell for us. The idea is that if you're a Damak customer, you never have to come into the office for anything. Whether you want an NOC, you want to pay your service charges, you want to pay for the property you've purchased, everything's done digitally. You can pay for a property on your app? On your app, yeah. You log in, it, it connects to all the major local banks here through APIs. So within our app, you log into your banking portal, you do the transfer, it hits your, our account directly, we know where the money's coming from, which unit it's going to, uh, service charges, booking amenities. If you live in one of our buildings, you want to book the meeting room, you don't call someone. You just go onto the app, you select the time slot, it shows you what's available. You can book it, tennis well, courts. That. You can book okay. tennis courts on an app. Do you know courts, how everything. great that is? There is tennis courts in my building, and because I have to go from building F to building B to sign my name on a wall, I've not done it. I've been living there for a year. <laughs> If it was on an app, I promise you I would have done it already. <laughs> It's time to move to Damak, huh? Yeah, Casey, what are you doing? I, I am house hunting. What I've is she doing? <laughs> I won't say where I'm living, but it's on, a, it's on a notice board with a piece of paper, and that just shows you the shift of digitalization can really help you as people. But you're be selling. a better person. Oh, yeah, 100%. Time to move to the Mac. <laughs> but you're saying the ultimate Damak dream, not the ultimate Damak dream, the ultimate Dubai dream, you know, to people like in terms of living. But what is the ultimate dream for Damak going forward, or just for you personally? So for Damak, our, our primary market will always be Dubai. But we do have a project. We have a project delivered in London, which is a 50-story tower. So it's a landmark project. We have a project coming up in Miami. Um, we want to build in New York, uh, Germany, Hong Kong, all the global cities. We want to put our flag in all the global cities. We have many projects in Toronto as well, which a lot of people don't know about. Resorts is something we're focusing on, so Maldives. Seashells is coming up, hopefully, Mauritius, we're looking at Bali, all the major global resort destinations. I mean, in Maldives, we're going to end up having three resorts in the next five years, where wow. one is ready in two years. So I think that's where we hope to take the brand. For me personally, focus on my family. I have a little boy now, he's two years old, Mohammed. So he, my pride and joy. <laughs> oh, he's a tornado, he'd be breaking all the cameras We'd everywhere. Love that. We'd <laughs> You would love life. that for the life. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think focusing on the family business and focusing on the family itself as well, uh, making sure us as siblings always work together, uh, always have a close relationship. That's, that's key. Uh, and it's very important to take the business forward as well and for all of us to be happy in life also, you know. Family is everything at the end of the day. Amazing. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, this is a family homegrown brand and you've just taken it internationally in a short space of time relatively. So um, thank you so much for your time, guys. This is Ali Hussain Sejwani, who is Managing Director of Operations and Technology at Demac Properties. We really appreciate your time this thank morning. You thank you very so much. much. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.